I, I think my grandmother will be upset. This might be a reveal to her, but you know. I won't tell her if you don't tell her. I don't think she knows how to get on here, so don't, <laughs> don't worry. I don't know if I'm allowed to show my feet, but I got my matching Kentucky one down here. <laughs> I'm matching. Aww. Yeah, out of solidarity with our Kentuckyites. And I got the Union Jack <laughs> on my bicep right here. Yeah. Hi, I'm Terry Hitchcock. Hey, thank you so much for clicking on this channel. First of all, I know you have a lot of options. So I'm trying to get the hang of the YouTube thing, so I really do appreciate it. Feel free to subscribe. Uh, I also appreciate you clicking on these interviews. This is for a new Apple TV series called Little Voice. It's a love letter to the musicality of New York. Sarah Bareilles is behind it. Jesse Nelson, J.J. Abrams helping produce as well. And I had a chance to talk to the cast, including the beautiful Brittany O'Grady and the equally charming Sean Teal and Colton Ryan, who kind of make up the love triangle in the series. And I'll be honest, I'm on Team Sean and Team Colton. I can't make up my mind. And I don't think you'll be able to either. I hope you enjoy. First of all, congratulations on this. I felt like I wanted to move back to New York City, be in my 20s and really struggle. <laughs> it, 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 it's a very honest take on a 20-something year old struggle in New York and finding themselves. It is an exciting time. When you look back, for sure, I think. This is based on Sarah's musical journey. What could you relate to it in terms of your own journey? Wow, uh, you know, I think Sarah is such an honest person and she's really true to herself. And I think that's a very brave thing to do. And I know that uh, in, in my own career, I strive to make sure that I am, I am as authentic as I possibly can and true to who I am and my beliefs and, um, and I think Sarah's work and her um, lyrics and musicality and her creative, you know, genius comes from a very honest place. And she comes from a very genuine side of herself. And I just love to do what I do. And I think she loves to do what she does. So I really identify with that as well. What's it like to sing one of her songs in front of her when she's right there? <laughs> It was scary, <laughs> but it was, it was so much, I mean, when you, when I thought about it, I, I was in, you know, super nervous, but when I first met Sarah, she's just such a very open and warm person and she guided me through the whole way. And I, and I felt, um, you know, nervous for sure, but very comforted and, and, um, supported. She's just such a kind, kind human being. I wish she was my friend. Is there a song, and you can't answer a Sarah song, is there a song out there that you like so much you actually wish you'd wrote it? Oh my gosh, that is a good question. I have to think about that. Um, wow. I, w I mean, I guess I wish I could have written an Adele song, like Someone Like You. I think it's very relatable, and it's just really to the point. And she's just really, I mean, all of her music, all of us can relate to it, and and I think those are going to be classics. Like when I have when I have kids, they're going to be listening to it, and their you know their children will be listening to it. So I love people that write the classics, or um, you know Carol King, um, so far away. I mean, it's just so simple, beautiful, so honest, and it, it just it's a it's a classic. One word. Who are you? And there's that great scene. You know, what's a word to describe you? And your word is mess. And I'm sure a lot of us can relate to that. But what is the one word that describes you? Oh gosh. Um I think the one word word uh the one word I think could describe me is uh sensitive. I think I'm a very sensitive person. I care a lot about people and their emotions and I'm very in tune with mine. Um so that makes life interesting um and very beautiful at the same time. You know what else is beautiful? The guys in this thing. Uh, I love the fact that you can't have a series like this without having a little romantic love triangle. I mean, come on, these guys are great. They're they're absolutely incredible. Um Colton and Sean are incredible to work with and they brought so much creative juice to their characters and so much uh charisma and love and I mean, you, you can't help but fall in love with both of them. So they're, they're the sweetest. I, I feel like Sean looks a little like a cross between Oscar Isaac and Noah Centineo. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's so <laughs> handsome and he's, so, and he's such a sweet, thoughtful guy. So I, I'm really excited to see how the ladies will fall for both him and Colton and Phil. I mean, they're all just such beautiful gems, so.
You know, I was just talking to Brittany. It's funny. She's so curious to see how audiences will respond. Will they be Team Samuel, Team Ethan? Because you got to have that good love triangle. But just watching you guys interact, there's no competitiveness at all between the two of you, is there? Good God, no. It's almost a problem for the shooting of the show. But we struggle to hold that animosity on set. It gets to the point where it's like, you guys are smiling at each other and you are technically mortal enemies. Um, <laughs> so we had to rein that in a little bit. But um, yeah. I couldn't, I was thinking about it earlier. I was like, how do I explain to them that I couldn't be happier with my adversary? But um, I would be happier if my adversary was slightly less worthy. So actually, I'm not the happiest <laughs> I could be. I could do it with them getting knocked down a few pegs, maybe. I'd, I'd be blushing if there wasn't a cake of foundation on my face. <laughs> <laughs> where well, you guys are both so good in this. You know, I love in the trailer that there's, there's that scene, uh, Sean, where you, you ask Brittany, what's the one word that described you? Her word is mess. In real life, what is that one word for you? Um, ooh, uh, that's a great question. Um, oh, God, you put me on the spot. I couldn't say. Um, eager eager oh. in every capacity um eager to work eager to be there for my friends eager to get out there and see more of the world just yeah any mo most of the things that i do i do with an eagerness to be Holden, <laughs> what's your word what's the one word that you would say describes you gooby it's all encompassing of the uh I'm silly messy trash um <laughs> nerdy yeah the whole thing just the mess <laughs> I know you've talked about what it's like working on a musical. What's it like working on a series that J.J. Abrams is a little bit a part of as well? It was amazing, but really challenging. You know, Sarah and I had never done TV before. Uh, we didn't really know what we were doing when we embarked on it, but it was the same as Waitress. We'd never written a musical before we wrote that one, so we were just like, let's dive in and fill it with everything we love about life and everything we love about New York and, and the world of music in New York. So it, it was an amazing experience. And to get to shoot in New York was incredible too. Oh, especially now, you know, you're watching this and you're, and you're oh, I miss New York. I miss I traveling and being a part of all that. I know, I know. It's almost like a period piece now. I guess the motto is then really don't know what you're doing and success will follow. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, the motto is like the motto of our show, like just keep listening to your little voice. Just keep gut checking and make sure you're believing in what you're doing every moment. Uh, you know, it's interesting because she doesn't like it. Her character of Brittany Best does not like it when people listen to the songs that she's written. It's yeah. personal. She's also been through a little bit. Um, when have you felt most exposed? What felt like the most personal thing for you where it, 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 you didn't love it? You loved it, but you didn't love it. Sarah and I had this in common. We both began our careers. Uh, for Sarah, she started singing her, her music in her 20s in clubs, which included songs like Gravity, and they didn't go over well. It didn't go over. So she hid her own music and just started singing covers for a long time. And for me, I wrote a movie called Karina Karina, and I convinced myself that it was horrible. So I hid it in a drawer for three years and then slowly brought it out and went through so many rejections. I think 250 studio passes on that over the years. Finally, after about 10 years or so, got that movie made. So we both shared that, you know, that timid start, like, I know my voice is a little different, will it find its way? And, and so we really wanted to imbue Bess with that, you know, tentative beginning that kind of picks up steam as you go. The show affected me not just, I mean, emotionally as a human, but as a performer. Um, I think uh, so many of the voices, like, like we know the logline of the show, and it couldn't be more concise, that, that it's about finding your voice and then finding the strength to use it. Um, that couldn't ring truer with anything from um, the performing arts world. And, uh, and there's a lot of influences that are positive and a lot that are negative that have been maintained through just knowing what might work for people. But everyone is different and uh, things might be impressed on you that might not be right for you and it sits wrongly. And that uh, I felt that with the show. Uh, and I've been in positions where I've been really uncomfortable and really insecure as a performer that happens. But if you have hope and if you stick to your guns and, uh, and you fight for what you care about, uh, that'll shine through. And I think that happens in the show quite beautifully. For me, it was just like such a love letter to the artistic journey or path. Like, and um, I think even if someone 
I'm a big believer of even if you don't end up becoming an artist, which I think is a, a lifelong fulfilling journey. Uh, if you don't even still pursuing in some way in our, the arts, whether you paint or sing on stage one time and you hate it, like you'll find out really quick what your voice is or what you want to say and how you want to say it. And so uh, I love it's, it's um, love letter to that, to just the arts and how it uh, affects one's voice or gives someone their voice. Well, I can't thank you guys enough. I'm on team Sean and I'm on team Colton, FYI. Well, so we I'm telling you guys, these two super charming and I'm glad they're friends in real life. A little voice starts streaming Friday, July 10th.